Hi, everybody. Welcome to the RV Podcast. This is episode 408. And this week, we tell you the truth about RV solar power and lithium batteries. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Wedlin and this is my lifelong traveling companion and my bride Jennifer. And we're coming to you today from our RV property in Linden, Tennessee. Woohoo! Yeah, we're excited to be here and the weather is a little bit cooler than yesterday so that's even better news. Well, we should tell you when we say a little bit cooler, it's 92 in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> and the sun's about to come out. We do hear some thunder, those afternoon thunderstorms that crop up in the summertime in the south. Uh, we're probably going to get one. Uh, but we are here. Our uh, property is developed now. We have all of our utilities in, but most importantly, we have our electricity in. And that is what is really pretty, uh, pretty exciting to us because you might be able to hear it running, but the 50 amps in and uh, we're going to be here much of the week doing some work and some progress uh, on uh, kind of some of our ideas and we're going to do a whole video on it for this coming saturday but it's really nice to be here it's so peaceful and quiet it's very exciting it is uh, we had an, a, a rather adventurous trip down i don't know if you can see that window right there on our fifth wheel you see all that white that is really tape it's actually tape over a piece of plexiglass because somehow as we were driving down here, it broke and we're not sure exactly what happened. I really think one of, one of you told us your ideas and we agree with you that the latch that you used to get out your emergency exit. That's that window, that's the window. Tight enough and that the wind kept working at it and eventually popped it and the glass splintered and Oh my gosh, the rest is it history. It is. I'm still cleaning up glass. Everywhere, yes, it was. And so it was uh, rather disappointing. And we don't know for sure because we never heard anything. Uh, there was never any sound of a rock breaking it, which is what we first thought. But when we posted a picture of it and put it on Facebook and then looked at it ourselves, you know, there's a little red latch there on that window. There's two of them on each side. And one was secure. The other one had been had, was loose, and what happened is we think it caught the wind, and then it eventually just kept going like that as we we're driving, and it twisted and shattered the glass. So we spent uh, oh several hours uh, finding plexiglass in Cave City, Kentucky, which we did at the Ace Hardware there. They helped us out, and then getting um, Gorilla Tape. That's what we learned. Use Gorilla Tape. Doesn't leave a residue. It's very strong. They're packing tape, actually. And we put the plexiglass on that window, and um, it's been great so far. So we have it, and it's hopefully going to be all over because we call Keystone uh, bright and early Monday morning, and not a problem. They're going to ship a replacement window to us. And uh, also they're going to have to find our, our drapes, the Roman shades uh, window coverings. Yeah, our Roman shade drape went out the window. Someplace along I-65. <laughs> yeah, 65. When that window if broke, find it, it. <laughs> it sucked it right out. And, uh, I hope it didn't cause an accident or anything yeah, behind us. Yeah, me too. So anyway, that was our great adventure. Well, we got some feedback from uh, listeners this past week. We want to share that with you. You want to uh, start off with the first one? Okay, the first one is from Carl and Alice, and it says, My husband and I drove from North Carolina to Rochester, Michigan. We lived, we lived in Rochester, actually, for well, 10 yeah, years. Yeah. And now we live a little north of Rochester in Michigan to deliver two new Chevrolet Silverados to a man and his son. Uh, we provide transportation services to automobile dealerships. We experienced firsthand the joy of Michigan roads. They really are a mess, as you've described many times. We saw so much road construction along the interstate highways as states begin to improve the infrastructure using appropriated federal funds. We were shocked to see the number of 18-wheel trucks in the Detroit vicinity that were lined up to cross into Canada on Friday. It's good that the border is open now, but it appears that there is quite a backlog. At least the goods are moving now. We noticed the decreasing gas and diesel fuel prices, but were shocked at the increase in prices of DEF. 
it was higher per gallon than gasoline at the pump in many truck stops along the way. That's from uh, Carl, Carl and, Alice. and Alice. And boy, they're right about DEF. Uh, I noticed that all along our way, it's uh, become harder and harder to find. We reported this about two, three months ago, said there'd be a shortage. And well, it's not a shortage yet. Uh, they are hard to, uh, hard to find. And, uh, that's, uh, and noticing the trucks lined up to get into Canada on the bridge in Detroit, even our bridge in Port Huron, the trucks get lined up. I feel so sorry for the truck drivers because they're trying to make a living and man, that line can really, really, really get long. Yeah, it can. And they're certainly right about the roads, but not just Michigan. It's really, there's a lot of other states that have it. I just think Michigan has probably, at least the southern part of the state, probably the worst roads that we encounter yeah. anywhere in the nation as we South travel. South of Detroit when you go into Ohio. Yep, yep. All right, some more feedback we come. Uh, this is from Cindy, and Cindy writes, Here's one for when you gas up your RV, pull up to the pumps farthest from the gas station store. That's because the people working in the store need to be able to keep an eye on all the pumps to prevent drive-offs or to hit the emergency stop on the pumps if something should go wrong. If you gas up at the pumps closest to the building in your RV, they're not gonna be able to see past that RV. I work at a gas station, so I know uh, please, for the safety of everyone there, use the furthest pumps. Good reminder from Cindy. I'd never thought about that, but boy, that Me makes either. a lot of sense. I always take the first open one. Yeah, but, we take uh, whatever is available. Well, thank you, Cindy. We will remember that. And I'm sure there's a lot of bad guys out there say, whoo-hoo, maybe I don't have to pay. I'll hide right back here and just <laughs> sneak off. It may indeed be. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk about the truth about solar and lithium batteries. And uh, I think you're gonna find these interviews that we're gonna share with you really interesting. So stay with us, we'll be back. Tired of overcrowded campgrounds, competing for reservations, paying high fees for sites? Well, ownership is an emerging trend in RVing that might be right for you. It sure was for us. Jennifer and I bought some land just west of Nashville, Tennessee in an incredible collection of mountaintop RV properties called the Woodlands at Buffalo River. These are five to 62 acre properties that allow RVs year round starting at $79,900. We loved it. The scenery is breathtaking and you own it outright. It's not a timeshare. It's your property, your way. You can landscape, garden, bring your pets, build what you want to build. There's high speed internet available and it is so private. It's a great place to make your home base. No more calling around for reservations, and it's ready whenever you want. They're selling these on September 3rd by appointments, five to 62 acres from $79,900. There's financing and big discounts on multi-lot packages. For information, visit rvlakes.com. That's rvlakes.com. When we're asked what's the most important modification we made to our RV, it's an easy answer. Battleborn batteries. Battleborn batteries are quality, safe, reliable lithium batteries that allow us to stay out there off the grid longer. Lithium batteries charge faster, they charge fuller, they're longer lasting, they're maintenance free. And battleborn batteries are protected by a 10 year guarantee. Now, in our case, they just dropped into the existing AGM batteries that we have. And they'll probably be the same on your rig, too. Battleborn battery experts can get those in your rig just like they did with ours. They can also match you up with the right cabling, the inverter, the charger, the solar controller, everything. Jennifer and I swear by our Battleborn batteries. They allow us to boondock off the grid. Check them out. Go to rvlifestyle.com slash lithium rvlifestyle.com slash lithium. Welcome back to the RV podcast. All right, time now for our main topic of the week, and it has to do with a topic near and dear to our hearts, solar power, lithium batteries. Uh, Jennifer and I were probably the first RVers to have a production equipped uh, RV with solar and lithium batteries. This is going back to maybe 2014, 2015, it was actually a prototype mm -hmm. that later became production. We got the production one later. We had a lot of trips back to the factory on that old one, right? We did. <laughs> that system, but they have worked out, um, they've worked out batteries, lithium batteries. They now will work in the cold and they have worked out uh, solar. But 
there is so much hype going around. Our RV was just down in Elkhart, Indiana, where we upgraded our solar. We went from 600 watts of solar on the roof of the fifth wheel back there that you can see over our shoulders to uh, 1200 watts. And uh, in terms of lithium batteries, we went with three of the uh, uh, Battleborn uh, Dragonfly, their parent company's uh, game changer batteries. We have uh, over 500 amp hours now of lithium battery. You would think, if you listen to some RV salespeople, that I could run indefinitely off all of that. And you know, that's not really true. Let's start with an interview that we did uh, in Elkhart with some folks from Keystone RV. Uh, uh, when we took uh, possession of our upgraded system, uh, we talked with Sam, who is going to give us a pretty good explanation of it. And then stay tuned because then we're going to talk about what this all means and how you can figure out what appliances take what draw with lithium and solar. Interesting interviews coming up right now. Well, Sam, what did we do here with this upgrade? So we took your solar panels on the roof and actually doubled them. You started with what Keystone has made known as the SolarFlex 600i system, which that system has 600 watts of solar on your roof. And what we've done is taken that to the 1200 system. Up on the roof, you'll see a total of four 300 watt panels, and they're all hardwired and actually hard structural brackets that hold them onto your roof. And all of those bracket, brackets and, and how we're applying them to your roofs all been tested. We're not guessing at how we're doing it. Now we talk about solar, but we talk about the sun beat coming down and it's going into a storage tank. Dark case, the batteries. Let's take a look at those. Absolutely. All right, Mike, let's look here in this actual our gas tank storage system or whatever you want to call, but actually is known as the batteries. So new for you are the game changer batteries. And I'm gonna move these right here and actually use them as a stool. You know that we have a partnership with Battleborn and Dragonfly batteries. These are the batteries to have. So these are known as the game changer batteries. You have a pair of them and actually a steel case that we provide. Each one of these batteries are 270 amp hour supply. Now remember the strength of lithium, and, and we don't want to dive too deep into lithium, but the great part about lithium, 270 amp hours in a battery, all 100% of that's available to you. When you do a lead acid battery, say it's a 100 amp hour lead acid battery, only 50% or 50 amp hours is actually a supply. So we know that what's coming in the industry, just like awnings were always pulled down and now they're electric, we really feel that lithium batteries is just going to end up being what the customer wants because their camping experience is so much more pleasant when you have lithium batteries. So now we got 1200 watts of solar on the roof. Again, remember we did three or four 300 watt panels. We upgraded from two 300 to four 300. And those panels are what's gonna fill this gas tank. And this gas tank's gonna allow you to do things that some other campers can't do. When you upgrade to something of this level, it's gonna allow you to do things like pull over and use your air conditioner. Now, whenever you talk about air conditioners, you need to make some steps. If you're gonna to go to this level, you're gonna to have to make sure you have an air conditioner with a soft start system so it doesn't kill your batteries. Um, but again, this is all about usable space. In conjunction with your 3000 watt inverter, that's what's gonna allow you to have this 12 volt convert inverted to 110 watts, which is what your appliances are gonna use. Jennifer's uh, frying skillet when she does your bacon in the morning. Some of the things that you can use now by pulling the gasoline or sun power or electricity out of these batteries. So often these days when somebody buys an RV and they uh, are sold solar and lithium and all that stuff, they are told this is the end of you can boondock forever with this. This is always you're going to be self-sufficient, totally energy independent for as much as you want. Run the air conditioner all night long, and that's all because of solar. How true is that statement? That's a great question. You know, this is almost like a public service announcement. One of the things that we find is that solar again is not the end all be all or the answer to all. Number one, how much sun are you really getting? How much do you actually have to use when you go to bed at night? You can use whatever power your panels were able to harvest from the sun in that time period before the sun goes down. So it strikes me that 
it's really incumbent on every RVer who's going to have solar or is thinking about solar is you also need to manage that you need to know how much power you're taking out when you turn on a hair dryer or uh, the microwave or uh, a fry pan you nailed it Mike and you know the perfect guy to answer that we have a guy on staff here by the name of John Brock now we talk about uh, air conditioning and that's always a question that everybody said well how long can I run my air conditioner and I understand it depends on how hot it is how mm -hmm. humid it is how cool the coach already is but in general give us some notes about the air conditioner. you're gonna make that up to six hours and we're talking air conditioner runtime not total keep your climate time but what this allows you to do is set this a few degrees below ambient and you can sip energy from that and keep your space cooler you're not necessarily going to get it down to an ice box or you know refrigerator temperatures um, with this package but you will be able to take the heat and humidity out and just have a few degrees lower ambient for all my other power needs off the grid mm -hmm. this is going to last a long time and those solar panels tell me about those they're going to be charging those batteries all day long all day long and actually when you put your unit in storage or you know when you put it up for the weekend um, and everything's disconnected, the solar's still connected, maintaining your battery bank. So when you, for those of us who have to keep our RV somewhere else and we don't have it plugged in, we don't have to worry about those batteries dying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you go camping and forget to turn a light off or something and then come back three weeks later, your batteries are gonna be up and full and you're not going to Walmart to grab three or four more batteries to uh, replace them. All of our solar panel arrays are parallel arrays. Um, what that means to you is if you have a series array, which some of our co competitors are employing, and one of those panels is in shade or covered or is damaged, the whole system doesn't work. With our parallel arrays, if you were to have a shadow over one panel completely blacked out, the other panel is still feeding your batteries. So with series, it's all or nothing. With parallel, it's whatever you have exposed to the sun it's still gonna feed your batteries. It comes with a Victron um, Smart Shunt, which is a battery monitor, a smart battery monitor, uh -huh. um, which via Bluetooth, you can connect to the app here and you can see a lot of the parameters of the system. This page right here has the charge controller and the battery monitor networked together. Um, what you can see right now is we're pulling 2.61 amps of current out of the system. And at our current load, we can go for three days and 12 hours. Now, I should mention we're inside. These panels aren't getting any sun. If they were out in full sun, this would say indefinite. But this is a really good tool and feature of the system to be able to monitor how much energy you're using. Right now, we have 100% yes. in, in those batteries. So let's just say we come over here and we turn some lights on. Well, you can see my time remaining is starting to count down. Now we've put a little load into the system. Now it's down to two days, 18 the, hours. Yep. And let's say we want to make some blended drinks. So you turn the blender on and we're going to have to go to blender takes 650 watts. Yep. And that really pulled our time remaining down. Down to one day and 10 hours. Yep. And we can go ahead and turn our refrigerator on. This has got a 12 volt refrigerator. <laughs> and this just keeps monitoring that loads. So now we're pulling 11 amps out of the system. Um, keep in mind, we're not filling it anymore. Now we've gone to one day, six hours. Five and hours. With this package also, we've got this air conditioner. Well, we can turn the air conditioner on to cool high, set it down below our ambient, and it's really going to take our time down. Wow, look at that drop. Because right now we're pulling, you know, a little over a thousand watts out of the system. So we are now down to uh, <laughs> it's still going down yep it takes it a minute to settle its calculation in yeah wow look at that drop yep now once again we don't have any solar feeding the batteries right, right now just taking charged batteries out correct 
So it's settling down somewhere around four hours. Yeah, probably so. it'll settle around three. Around three? Yep. Uh, and that would run everything that we've got on so far, the lights and the, well, we turned off the blender, but the lights and mm -hmm. the refrigerator. And uh, look at that, down to three hours and, uh, and change. Yep, but also, I mean, you gotta look, we're pulling 90 amps out of that battery bank right now. Um, yeah. that, that battery bank is getting 90 amps to power the inverter, and then that's powering the air conditioner. So, the air conditioner is a huge drain. Let's say if we want to, now we're down to only 99% power on yep. that thing. We'll turn the air conditioning off mm -hmm. and, uh, and sweat a little. What are some of these other big power drains, and maybe not so big power drains that do end up um, taking us down? Yeah, and I mean, you also got to look at continuous and intermittent loads, right? Um, so like if we make coffee, it's only going to take a few minutes to pull that out um, and the battery will recover some and your solar is going to charge your battery back up. And that's like but, says, uh, 700 watts? On yep, the, 700 on watts. Okay, um, and that's for how long a period of time does it take 700 watts? The time it takes to make the pot of coffee and keep your burner warm. Okay, um, so but many of us leave the burner on for two or three hours. Yep. You know? It's and that's gonna, 700 watts the whole time? That's probably going to be pretty close to 700 watts the whole time. Wow. Um, the other thing we got here that surprises a lot of people is the hair dryer. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand how much electrical energy the hair dryer takes. Um, this is just a small um, hair dryer purchased from a common store. 1875 watts. Oh that's my goodness. slightly over the capacity of the inverter in the system. But you could probably see when we turn the dryer on and flip it to high. So now we're pulling a little over 1900 watts out of the system. Out of a 3000 watt inverter. Yep. And that's going to take your time remaining down pretty quick. I mean, low. Yeah. Very We're going to go under under two hours in a second. Here we yep. go, under two hours. Look at that. So the hair dryer takes a lot of energy when you're boondocking. And you got to be mindful of that and mindful of what you're using and how long you can use it. So I'm going to tell Jennifer to go outside and they let the sun dry your hair. Yes. Um, and uh, you can see here as we turn things back off, you know, take the fridge off, our time's going to recover. Um, it's coming back up. It takes it a while to do the calculation, but that's just a really handy tool to be able to monitor how much energy you have and how long you're going to be able to use that energy. So this really is a very efficient and sustainable form of power. It is. Lithium batteries. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to go visit your friend that doesn't have an RV hookup, um, and stay in his yard or his field, you know, this makes it sustainable and you can live in the RV and still have some of your creature comforts available to you. Just don't dry your hair. Just don't your dry batteries. your hair <laughs> for too long. <laughs> yeah. John, thank you so much uh -huh. for helping us understand lithium. Excellent. So after hearing this, you might say, well, do, do, are you glad you have all that lithium? Did you waste your money? No, we didn't. Uh, it is a lot of money to upgrade. We do a lot of boondocking and uh, we want that assurance that we can go off the grid. We used it coming down. We had stopped for dinner at, uh, or lunch or dinner on a rest area. We just turned on the air conditioner and with that lithium and solar, it worked. And that's gonna work great for us because we, we want it. When we stop to have lunch, we stop along the road or go in to have dinner and have a dog and wanna take care of our pet. Yep, and when we are boondocking, with uh, not, not running that air conditioner all the time, with the solar, which replenishes the system, and with the batteries we have, we can stay off the grid pretty much energy independent with all that, uh, that battery power and uh, the solar power. So we are pretty excited about it. But don't let people tell you that uh, you, get, you spend you know, thousands of dollars for the system that you're gonna be able to run your AC all night long. No, not gonna happen. All right, we come back, we got some questions of the week that we'll answer. When we're on a road trip, we always seem to find a way to stop at a Camping World Center. There are over 225 Camping World locations across the country, and there's always one close by when we need parts and accessories for our RV or just want to shop. In fact, 
Uh, we have so much fun with uh, Camping World, and as we talk about it, as one of our sponsors, they have agreed to offer a 10% discount if you use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you buy $99 or more in merchandise. You'll find everything you want from outdoor furniture and appliances, the ones you see us use in our videos and that we talk about here in the podcast. RV extras that include everything from camping chairs to fire pits, electrical accessories, must-have gadgets. Check them all out. And again, don't forget, use the coupon code RVLIFESTYLE10 when you visit CampingWorld.com. Welcome back, and now it's time for the questions of the week. And um, before we get to them, we want your questions. We want your comments. Our email address is Mike and Jen at RVLIFESTYLE.com. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you next week. You got the first question? I do. Uh, we are going to a campsite for the weekend that is four hours away from home. When do you grocery shop? I'm thinking of grocery shopping at home and throwing the cold stuff in the Yeti cooler and having everything before we get there. Experiences, recommendations. We can't park the RV at our house. Our street is, uh, is on a hill and the trailer is too long and we will scratch on the street if we tow it on our driveway. Oh, Adrian. Yeah. Adrian sent mm -hmm. that question in, and Adrian, you had to send it in this week because we are, we realized we should have shopped before we left for this trip, uh, and that was probably... I did shop. Uh, yeah, but you didn't bring all the food. We didn't bring the food because we figured, well, we'll get food there. I figured that we'd get <laughs> food there. And um, the little town we're at here in Linden, yes, there's a supermarket, but it was closed on Sunday, and we were unable to get the food we wanted, and we realized we should have, and, and we had that delay on the trip. We had to spend a night yeah, up in had, Kentucky yeah. because of the window incident. So, uh, so It's so much better to yeah. shop and bring it from home. Whatever you can prepare and bring from home, that means that you're not going to be cooking when you get to your campsite. Think through your meals, plan ahead of time, and you're not going to be wasting your time at the grocery store. Sure, you're going to forget maybe this or that, but if it's only for a weekend, I bet you're going to pack everything you need, and you're not going to waste your precious time at a store. Now, you also say uh, that you can't bring your RV to your house like the day before, because we recommend that you go in the day before you're leaving and turn on the refrigerator so it gets nice and cold. It takes really uh, almost 24 hours for the, the, free, the, the freezer and the refrigerator to get cool enough for all your food. So if you can't do it, if you can't bring it home, can you go to wherever you have it stored and turn it on there, running on LP or what other alternate system you have for power? Uh, and short of that, then what we recommend is you uh, bring the food that you need to have refrigerator and pack it in a cooler with ice. And uh, as your refrigerator uh, cools down, then you can put it in. But uh, Pack it up at home. Take it from me, who says, oh, we can pick up our groceries on the road. Pack everything you can before you leave. <laughs> we learned that. I learned that the hard way. But we, we both learned it the hard way, like going out west and we'd be in the middle of nowhere and for, it was hard to find food. Yeah. You know, I don't want to eat McDonald's. I, I shouldn't say a brand name. <laughs> I don't want to eat fast, fast food. food. I like McDonald's. <laughs> I shouldn't eat it. Okay. One more question. This comes uh, from Jerry and Lori. Great uh, videos. We thank you for encouraging my wife and I to take it to the next level in life and commit to the adventure. I'm 72 years old, my wife is 65 years old. They're just kids. Yeah, Mere spring children. chickens. 50, don't you know 70's the new 50? Uh, your videos have been an inspiration to us to continue an adventurous lifestyle. We've traveled to 35 countries and by seeing how you and Jen take on the challenges that has given us the courage to do things that we've not felt comfortable doing. Bottom line, we're getting out of the comfort zone. What advice would you give us? You're doing it, and thank you for what you're doing. It's appreciated, Jerry and Lori. We've um, been to 35 countries. They're used to packing and traveling. We've only, I've only been to 22 countries. Well, you know, uh, the RV lifestyle is a lot better, I think, than traveling internationally and all that hassle with living out of a suitcase because you've got everything, your own bed, your own bathroom, your own food, your own uh, uh, everything you want to bring along is hanging on your own closets. 
Um, but that said, it, you know, it requires some addition. There's always, you know, hooking up, unhooking, or just driving from place to place. Start slow, do some short trips close to home. Start with a weekend trip, go to uh, several days, then a week, and then a month, and you'll be veterans by then. But by all means, get out there and do it. And obviously you're not worried about your health because you've been to 35 countries. Yeah. And um, whatever you need. I mean, I've had pneumonia on the road. I've you had were hospitalized. Yeah. yeah, I've had a tooth infection on the road. You've had surgery on the road. You didn't yeah. need the surgery, but I mean, you had surgery on the road. Someday we'll have to tell you they're both pretty good stories. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but so we have had health issues on the road and you just deal with it. You deal with it it's just like you would at home. Yep. You know, um, have your your prescriptions uh, set with a uh, with a national chain, and uh, you can pick them up pretty much anywhere. Yeah. And we'll have to share our hospitalization stories sometime. <laughs> They're too long for this podcast, but uh, uh, the point being is you can find care anywhere, uh, even if there are bears in the parking lot. Uh, that's what happened with you in Red Lodge, uh, Montana. Montana. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, you can reach us anytime. Our personal email, Mike and Jen at RVLifestyle.com. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. Happy trails.